Hey guys, Roman here from Game Guides, and today I'm going to show you how to get the best possible performance in the Delta Force demo. Specifically, let me show you how to turn the game from a stuttery, blurry mess into a smooth, sharp looking game. Now, before jumping right into the results, I'd like to stress that this is still a alpha test and that the game is, in its current state, horribly optimized for performance. And to show you what I mean, here is a comparison of using different graphical settings on two of my systems. The solid lines are for my old AMD based system, specifications you can see in the bottom right corner, and the dashed lines are for my Intel and Nvidia based system. In pretty much any other game, those two systems perform almost identical. However, in Delta Force, you can see that my old AMD based system performs about 50% better than the other one, or in other words, the extreme preset of AMD matches roughly the performance that I'm seeing on my Intel and Nvidia based system. Additionally, there just doesn't appear to be much of a difference in terms of performance when modifying graphic settings on that machine. The second problem with Delta Force at the moment is that the game is extremely stuttery on some systems. So on my Intel system, I'm always getting these extreme high uh, spikes in the frame times. Now, let me just briefly explain what frame time is, because this has led to some confusion in previous videos of mine. So in this game overlay, you can see this line going from the right to the left. And the line represents the frame time, which is essentially the time it takes for a frame to render. Of course, if a single frame takes roughly 50 milliseconds instead of the usual 2 to 3 milliseconds, then this is perceived as a stutter. Now, there is actually a way to fix this in Delta Force, which I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. So now let's finally hop into the game and talk about the individual graphic settings and how they might or might not affect performance together with their visual impact. As always, I would recommend you to use the full screen display mode over borderless windowed. Now, I didn't find any performance differences, but generally full screen has the lower input latency than borderless windowed. The other options leave on auto and leave the frame rate cap on unlimited. Now, here's a quick comparison between the different sharpness levels in the game. So we have a zero sharpness, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100. This is obviously personal preference, I like to have it a little bit higher at 75%. VSync, as always, you should turn off in order to avoid added input latency. The field of view, as we saw before, doesn't have a significant impact on performance whatsoever. In fact, at roughly 70 or 80 uh, FOV, I actually saw the lowest performance. So don't really bother too much about this. I usually just have it at 110 as I play pretty much any game, but you can also bump it up to 120 and you're not going to lose any performance. Moving down to the basic graphic settings, we first have the weapon motion blur toggle, which you'll obviously want to have disabled. Reflections doesn't come with a huge FPS penalty, it's only about 1%, um, but you can see that the game actually looks significantly better with reflections turned on. A small note on these graphs, now I'm just comparing the lowest and the highest preset that I'm just calling Ultra. Uh, in fact, it's actually called Ultimate in the game, which I found relatively weird. So I'm just going to call it Ultra. And I didn't go through each and every sub setting here. I just benchmarked the lowest and highest preset for each setting, because frankly, the difference between different presets is pretty much negligible. Texture filtering is clearly broken as of this moment, as there is no visual or performance impact when increasing this option. Ambient occlusion, as always, has a pretty significant impact on performance. I'm talking about roughly 15%. And as you can see from the comparison, it actually does make the game look more realistic, as it introduces shadows around objects where there usually aren't any. Um, however, because this is such a huge performance hog, I generally recommend to leave this disabled. Particles, distortion, as well as scene details have apparently no effect on performance or visual fidelity in Delta Force. Conversely, the scene view distance actually affects the fidelity of objects and how far out they're actually drawn. So in this comparison here, we can see that the pipeline has more details on the ultra side. And additionally, you can see that some props are just missing on the left hand side. So especially if you're intending on sniping, my recommendation actually would be to leave this on the highest setting. Moving down to the advanced graphics settings, where first of all, we have the render scale. And generally, this nicely linearly increases performance when you decrease it. However, personally, I prefer to leave this at 100%. Moving on to depth of field, which frustratingly enough always turns back on whenever you restart the game. Just be aware of that. 
If you notice that your weapon is blurred, then this is likely because the depth of field has been enabled once again by the game. Global illumination marginally reduces performance and it mostly introduces more shadows and more lighting sources to the scene. Here's a comparison between running the shader on the lowest and highest settings. Note that for this comparison, I actually restarted the game and I forced the game to recompute the shaders, which I'm going to talk about how this is achieved at the end of today's video. But from my opinion, the shader low actually looks more contrasty and more gritty. So this is the setting that I prefer to stick with. The textures option is clearly bugged as both the lowest and highest setting result in exactly pixel by pixel the same graphical fidelity of any and all textures. Similarly, I wasn't able to find any visual or performance differences for the streaming setting. The shadows option primarily affect the shadow of your own operator as well as ever so slightly shadow of other objects. However, it's more pronounced with the operator and you can see a significant improvement in its fidelity, however at basically no cost in performance. On the other hand, the shadow map setting mostly affects shadows of different objects around the world, which is also why it has a much higher performance penalty and which is why I would recommend you to leave this on low. Finally, I would highly recommend to disable volumetric fog as this simply introduces fog in the entire scene, making players harder to spot. Coming to the super resolution section, which generally is here to help you gain more FPS by running the game at a lower resolution. Unfortunately, every single implementation of super resolution mode is currently broken. So instead of actually boosting your performance, you're actually losing out on a lot of FPS. Here's an example for AMD Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2.0. This is Temporal Super Resolution. And finally, here's Intel XESS, where we can once again see horrendous performance and horrendous visual fidelity. Also, I saw similarly abysmal performance numbers when using DLSS. So no matter what you do, do not use super resolution in Delta Force as of this moment. Now, when it comes to NVIDIA Reflex, I would actually recommend you to leave it off because Delta Force actually didn't implement the latest standard. And I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA drivers actually don't yet really support the Delta Force game as a whole. So based on these results, let me give you my recommended best settings for the highest visual quality and the potentially best performance, although it's still pretty bad on Intel, in the Delta First demo. Display mode, full screen, all of the other settings under display under auto, the unlimited frame rate cap, sharpness 75% and disable VSync. Field of view I like to have at 110, but this comes down to personal preference. Under basic graphics settings, make sure that the weapon motion blur has been turned off, put reflections and scene view distance to high and leave everything else on low. And under advanced graphics, I put shadows to ultra in order to see my and enemy shadows better. All of the other options you should definitely have on low. Finally, absolutely do not use super resolution as this only reduces performance as I showed in this video. Also, you don't want to use Nvidia Reflex as this is not yet fully implemented. Now, in this last but most important part of today's video, I'd like to talk about how to fix stuttery gameplay or these spikes in the frame time graph in Delta Force. So basically, after you have set all of your graphics settings to your liking, you should force the shaders to recompute. Now, in my case, the shaders have probably been computed for the shader quality ultra, and then I just turned it down to low because I didn't like the way it looked but the shaders actually have been stuck on that level and unfortunately there is actually no way in the game to force the shaders to reload as we can see it for instance in Modern Warfare 3. However, if you delete the right line from a config file, the shaders are going to be recomputed. Now in order to find your config files, you want to right click on the Delta Force demo in Steam, go to Properties, click on Installed Files, click on Browse, open up the Game folder, Delta Force, Saved, Config, and the Windows Client folder where finally you find all of your configuration files. Here you want to open up the User System Setting HD in a file, scroll down and delete the numbers after PSO done. Once you now relaunch the game, it will force the shaders to restart at the levels that you have set the shaders to. Et voilà, once you do this, you should have a buttery smooth gameplay as the game is actually displaying the shader in the level that the shaders have been compiled at. So big thanks to Chris for figuring this out, I'll leave the video where he talks about this in the description below. 
Now besides the heavy stuttering, another aspect of the game that is driving me absolutely nuts is that whenever you're moving, the game applies temporal anti-aliasing. Now this is absolutely horrible because it makes the game look extremely blurry. So here you can see an example screenshot whilst I'm still moving ever so slightly and you can see how extremely blurred everything is when compared to the example on the right hand side where I'm simply stood still. Thankfully, some clever people online have also figured out how to disable temporal anti-aliasing, which is the second config tweak that I would recommend you to do. So in the config directory, you'll want to open up the engine.ini file and paste these two lines at the bottom of the file. For your convenience, you can find these two lines in the description. From this comparison, you can see that after having disabled temporal anti-aliasing, we no longer get this blurry vision whenever our character moves. So thanks so much for this other YouTuber Mellow here, I'm also going to leave his video in the description below. But that's it for today guys, I hope this video helped you to get the best performance out of Delta Force and also to fix any stuttering in game. If this video has been any help for you then leave a like and a comment down below and of course a subscribe would be highly appreciated. If you're interested in seeing more videos like the one you're watching right now but also for other games such as Counter Strike 2 or Black Ops 6. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys in the next video.